Now, the Prime Minister has today denied that the UK is climbing down over leaving the customs union. This follows a report in the Daily Telegraph claiming that ministers have agreed as a last resort to remain tied to the customs union beyond the end of the transition period. Speaking to the media at an EU summit in Bulgaria this morning, the Prime Minister emphasised that the country would be leaving it along with the rest of the EU. The United Kingdom will be leaving the customs union as we're leaving the European Union. Of course, we will be negotiating future customs arrangements with the European Union. And I've set three objectives. The government has three objectives in those. We need to be able to have our own independent trade policy. We want as frictionless a border between the UK and the EU so that trade can continue. In, and uh, we want to ensure that there's no hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland. Theresa May. Well, joining me now is Steve Swinford from the Daily Telegraph, who had the splash on the front of his paper today. So um, just give us more detail about the story, Steve. Joe, I'm delighted to be here. And um, what we learned was that on Tuesday, the Brexit War Cabinet agreed to what's called an Irish backstop, which means that as a very last resort, if uh, all of the plans are not in place, we would essentially keep a customs arrangement with the EU in which we'd be tied to the customs union effectively, would be aligned to it. So the government is today formally denying that we will be in the customs union, but that doesn't mean that we won't still be tied to a lot of it. And it's really upset Brexiteers, the pros prospect of that. Right. And uh, oh, yeah, but it won't surprise you, obviously, that this has been uh, denied, that nothing has changed, uh, that Theresa May, as we just heard there, is saying that we will leave the customs union when we leave the EU. EU. Um, is it also um, the case, as you wrote, that, that Boris Johnson, Michael Gove were outgunned at that meeting, that they in the end reluctantly agreed and signed up to this idea because Brexiteer influence is waning in the Cabinet? That's correct. They essentially swallowed the idea. They raised strong objections in the meeting, but it wasn't ultimately a resigning issue. No one's quitting the cabinet and no one's leaving the government. There are still big fights to have over what our customs arrangement with the European Union looks like after Brexit. They want to be there for those fights. So they've reluctantly agreed to it, even though they don't like it. Right. But isn't the point, though, that to some extent, Theresa May is right in saying that we will leave the customs union and the single market when we leave the EU. It's just the mechanism by which we do that still needs to be agreed. Um, and so the backstop, as it is, is only in play until that mechanism has been decided upon, whether it's the maximum facilitation and technology that deals with this frictionless border or whether we have some sort of customs partnership. That's exactly right. And Downing Street's argument is that they can have their customs solution, whether it's a customs partnership or MaxFAC as it's known, or something in between, and they can have that already uh, by the time the transition period ends, yeah. December 2021. But officials are sceptical. They think it will take a lot longer to get ready. And that actually, we need a bridge. We need a way out of that in case things aren't in place. So we could end up in a position where we are still technically tied to the customs union and have to follow a lot of its rules and possibly even end up paying money into the European Union still. It's not clear yet how that process will work. All right. Steve, thanks very much for joining us. Um, here in the studio is the Brexit supporting Conservative MP Bill Cash. Hello. Jim. Hello. Yes. Bill, disappointment for you then. Um, your colleagues in Canada have lost the argument. No. <laughs> ah. Because we've just heard from Stephen uh, what he's said and I think he's right. You've just heard from the Prime Minister too. But... There is another factor which hasn't yet been mentioned, and that is that this backstop is part of a draft agreement that was prepared uh, as a result of a meeting on the 8th of December last year. We've heard Coveney refer to it, Varadka and yeah. all the rest of it. Let's, but, just explain what that, let's just explain what that backstop um, is. Yes. Um, tell the viewers exactly what it means. Well, what it means is that there is a final option C, uh -huh. which they say would mean that we would have to fit in with the regulatory alignment of the, of the customs union in relation to the Irish North and South. In order to keep it frictionless. In order to keep it frictionless. Right. However, the fact is that that agreement is not a legally binding document. It is not yet part of the withdrawal agreement. Right. And it is, I mean, I, we had a meeting yesterday with Karen Bradley, uh, the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, in front of my committee, the European Scrutiny Committee, and we went into all this. Mm. And the plain fact is that it is not binding. And it may be that there are people talking about it, but it is not a binding agreement. Right, but the fact that it's not so binding... So option C is not actually binding. 
binding on the United Kingdom. But it is an option, isn't it, Bill Cash? It's, and it's if... something that's being talked about, but it, nothing is agreed until everything is no, agreed. No, but it is an option. And it's an option that you don't support, and nor do many of you. I certainly your... don't. Right. No, no, I don't well... like the idea, but the fact is that what is an idea is not necessarily an obligation. Right. And there is no obligation. There are loads of things, Joe, that are being discussed at the moment with contrary views as to whether they're good ideas or not. The question is, what will actually happen? Yes. And that will be decided by a legal obligation in an agreement. Right, well, let's talk about what okay. might happen. Everybody says they want a frictionless border. Yes. Everybody says and there no must be no border. hard infrastructure. No hard oh, we've, we've heard, we've heard, we've heard it. Heard it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Three cheers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the problem is that neither of the potential solutions, the mm -hmm. customs partnership, which you don't support, um, and the maximum facilitation, which everybody says at the moment is not possible. Well, might be. Everybody, Hang on. Let me just finish. Uh, no. just, let me finish. It, it's not possible. So the EU, many people in your party, many people across Parliament. If it's not ready, let's imagine that there is uh -huh. a technical. Let's imagine there's a technical solution, and it's not ready by 2020. But it's ready by 2023. So are you prepared to stay in the customs well, union till then? Can I just make the point about the money which Stephen no, Stouffer made? No, because that question. if we stay in after the 30th of December mm. 2021, 2020, mm. in other words, on the 1st of January 2021, yes. a huge bill, which I've already pointed out from the European Scrutiny Committee, will mean another £5 billion. Pounds. Right, but that's not the answer to my question. Would it you is, be prepared to do that? Well, the short answer is I certainly don't want to, but this is an objective which is currently being discussed. We're in the business of ideas, not legal obligations right. at the moment. I can't make myself... We must not give in to ultimatums from Tusk, Barnier, Varadka, Coveney. That's what they're and doing. And Remain a Tory MPs. Uh, I'm talking... Uh, uh, yes, that could also apply. Right. What, what's Labour's position? It's not really that much clearer, is it? Well, Labour have said that they would want to stay in some customs union. I mean, I think what the Prime Minister is proposing, whether it's sort of a, a full plan or being talked about, is broadly um, sensible. I mean, if you're going to have to have an extended period... I mean, why wouldn't you use that on a pragmatic basis? I mean, you look, might never get out of it. Well, I mean, do you know, do you know how you see it, Bill? It's almost like we're, we're running up to, to the cliff edge, but we're giving ourselves a longer run-up period. Actually, it's in, like in a an way, escalator. You get on the way. first steps and you can get off, but, and after I mean, that you I, can't. I, do, you, I think we cannot underestimate the Northern Ireland situation. I think we here in London gloss over it quite lightly. So it's something can be sorted. I mean, I was in Belfast just last week, and people are raging about it. It is an issue. And we are playing with their lives and their future, the strength well, of the Good Friday agreement. There's a lot of disinformation. Agreement. There's well, a great deal of well, disinformation Well, I think people in Northern it. Ireland do know what they're talking well, about Well, I'm with talking the to Northern respect. Ireland people as well. And I have to also say that yesterday in the committee proceedings, we went into this. It was in public. It was on television. It's mm. been seen by people. And the fact is that all this talk about cameras, there are cameras there already around the area. You know what, Bill? Right. That is not how Let people are feeling well, in, let in, me, in, sorry, I don't on the ground in Northern Ireland right now. From an outsider's perspective, Jordan, are you a spiritual Brexiteer? I have some sympathy with people's desire to disentangle themselves from r rulers who are too far away in the power hierarchy from them. What so, a good point. Why? Well, because as people move away from you up hierarchies, it's harder and harder for them to represent you properly at a local level. And I also have a tremendous amount of faith, I would say, all things considered, in, in the people of the UK to muddle through properly because they've been doing that for a very, very long time. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I'd bet, <laughs> my sense right. as a Canadian is that I'd bet on Britain. All right. So, but I appreciate that, but that, that's a kind of nice platitudinous sort of statement because we've got, you know, we are, we've had a huge period of austerity. People are really struggling in, in parts of the, the country now. We've had a wage yeah, freeze. We, 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 we've had a, but we've had a wage freeze in this country. We're in a cost of living crisis. We haven't got enough money for our schools, for right. our hospitals. You know, the economy does matter. Nobody voted to be poor. It's all very well giving the patriotic language of freeing yourself. 4.2% unemployment right. rate. And on that, before this freeze. takes over the whole programme, Program. I'm sorry, uh, Bill Cash. Joe, very we have nice to, to see let you, you go. Again. You need to leave. I have to go, indeed. So, for more reporting and analysis of Brexit, check out the BBC News website if you haven't done already. I must say it on a daily basis. That's bbc.co.uk forward slash Brexit.